It looks like Halo Infinite's getting an updated UI, a roadmap at the end of January, as well as significant changes to the most popular multiplayer mode in the game. Somehow this went under everybody's radar. Sprung Studios tweeted this out back in October of 2023 saying, we are thrilled to be collaborating with 343 Industries to bring our specialized UI slash UX experience to Halo Infinite. Stay tuned to see our work unfolding in future updates of the game. Spartans, are you ready? One of the biggest pain points with the community has been the UI of Halo Infinite. While it's functional, it definitely doesn't look that great or even play out that well when it comes to finding what you need. The biggest complaint I can definitely point out to you guys is the side-scrolling UI. Let me show you right here where you click on like a Spartan, you see all your different items. You have to scroll through everything to go like, oh, that's what you can customize with your Spartan. And then if you're trying to find, say, like a specific type of helmet, you kind of just have to keep on scrolling through. Now you can favorite things, but I don't really see the benefit of it a lot of times. And so you kind of scroll through everything to find exactly what you want, especially when it comes to these visors where there's a lot of necessarily duplicates, but a lot of similarities between many of the visors that you kind of just kind of scroll through and look through and go, oh wait, which one do I want? Like, how do I filter out which one? If I wanted a blue one or a green one or a gold one, because you kind of do it by pattern and color for the most part. Apparently some of the work though has already gone into the game, recently reported by Bathrobe Spartan here, showcasing that it actually was in season five where a good chunk of it was actually released, saying right here, one of the people who works at that studio saying, with the release of Halo Infinite Season 5, I've had the opportunity to collaborate with UI features as a co-development partner through Sprung Studios UX UI design with 343 Industries. I don't think this necessarily means that all the work is already done. I think there is more work to be done with the UI when it comes to Halo Infinite. But when you look at the history of Sprung Studios, it can be a little exciting, but also a little concerning. Let me show you why right here. As these are the various games brought to you by Rebs Gaming, kind of reported on this on Twitter, showcasing that like games like Injustice, Dead Alliance, they also worked on Halo Wars 2, which I thought the UI on that was all right. You know, it was functional. I could get myself through the games all right. Valorant. But then you also see Call of Duty Warzone and Modern Warfare, which those games, I would say, have the worst UI ever created in gaming. So you can't put all that blame on Sprung Studios. I think they're more kind of a support studio where they get a task and we want you to make this and they go, okay, we'll make that. And then here you go, upper management. This is what you wanted. Well, I would say Halo Infinite's UI is functional. It definitely doesn't just look the best or isn't that visually appealing. I mean, we just look at the game right now that you have a Spartan kind of across like a background right here. Nothing really like in the world. Like you see with Call of Duty, right? They're like in a warehouse or an environment with other other friends in the game even though this stance is more animated right they're not just standing still but they're not like kind of moving around looking around or kind of being part of the environment especially on the multiplayer side of things i feel like there's a lot of empty awkward space right here like up here especially and then like the ui for the list of modes well functional i think just doesn't really look that great and the side scrolling of the shop well i know people hate the shop within this game but you can see like when you keep scrolling like oh my god there's so much more oh my gosh there's so much more like you have to physically go towards the end to find some of the really cool stuff as well especially this uh santa's little helper pack i think is really fun but you have to like physically go there. And I think philosophy when it comes to UI design, it's like whatever makes people have to do the least amount of clicks to get to where they want to go is the best way to go about doing things. This is a developing story. So as soon as we get some more concrete information on what's changing with the UI of Halo Infinite, you know, I'll share it with you guys here on the channel. There are some significant changes coming to one of the most popular modes, if not sometimes the most popular mode within Halo Infinite, and that is Ranked Arena. As you guys remember, this stat right here showcasing the most popular modes within Halo Infinite. This was posted back in September, so the data is a little dated, but it's still rather relevant. And I think the playlists haven't really changed a whole lot since September, since this data was posted. So we're assuming that Ranked Arena is still one of the most popular modes, if not the most popular mode out there. And it's getting a significant change within 2024. The esports lead over at 343 Tashi tweeted this out, giving out some pretty good information on what's going to be changing. For year three of HDS, we're making balance updates to the existing maps in order to make them more competitively balanced, address some player feedback, and over change up the stale meta on these maps which for some hasn't changed since launch i absolutely agree with this sentiment especially with the stale meta as he put it right there i felt like the sandbox has been a pretty good state for over the last year or so 
uh, just something needs to kind of change and mix up the gameplay a little bit to make it a little more exciting. Some maps have very small changes like minimal weapon slash equipment tweaks. Some have more broad sweeping changes like new hill rotations and locations, updated weapon slash equipment set, and more. These changes will be just for ranked and HCS. And the maps included with these changes are Aquarius, Argyle, Empyrean, Forbidden, Live Fire, Recharge, Streets, and Solitude. Expect these changes to be released this month and the full change list will be provided on release. Additionally, we'll be red racking equipment, which means a new one won't spawn until the original is depleted. I really like the idea of red racking equipment, much like they do with weapons within this game, more like power weapons for the most part. It's just so then you have more consistent gameplay experience when it comes to playing. It's, more, it's a lot more for game play awareness where if you see equipment that is red right there you go okay it's on the field i need to take a mental note of that think for example the repulsor on live fire if you go grab one you're like okay cool i got a repulsor i can throw someone off the map that's gonna be great and then you get thrown off the map that's rather frustrating but with that repulsor being red racked in the future here you go to grab it and you go oh it's not on the ground it's red racked that means that someone has it right now i probably should stay away from some edges how about some new maps as well well that's coming in this year as well for ranked and a reply here on twitter saying can we get some more forge maps injections into the playlist and he says yes richie hines is working on foragers right now this is really great to see as with forge content you can work hand in hand with specifically the competitive insights seem to have well-balanced maps to be able to play on that are going to be fun and interesting. I'm hoping for some more unique maps rather than just recreations like we've had so far when it comes to the rank side of things. We've seen this throughout Halo 3, 4, and especially 5. And we do know that the fastest turnaround when it comes to maps being implemented into matchmaking is two months. But for the competitive side of things, I can imagine that being a little bit longer as they need to be thoroughly tested a lot. As in a competitive setting, you want to make sure that the balance is just right. Compared to a social map you can kind of just you know have some more fun with it while we're on the topic of ranked in the hcs we are getting a roadmap as well for halo infinite showcasing what we can expect for the year of hcs and by the end of january we will get a hcs roadmap to be able to plan trips plan your weeks and stuff like that to know like okay if there's an event happening near my town i need to set that weekend away so i can actually go to the event if you haven't been to an event I highly suggest you go to one. I went to the Salt Lake City event, which was fantastic, held on by SSG. It was a ton of fun. Got a chance to meet up with a lot of friends and creators, as well as followers on there as well, which was just a great time. And the vibe was just perfect. And of course, I went to the HCS Grand Finals here in Seattle, and I made some content there. You guys definitely enjoyed it. So it's been a really fun experience going to these events. If you've never been to one, I beg you, like, please go and do it. Even if you're rolling solo, you might even make some new friends. So you know, at the end of this month, we're gonna be reporting on what that roadmap looks like for HCS. Now, 2024 is looking to be an interesting year for the Halo franchise and Halo Infinite. If you guys wanna see my predictions, what's gonna happen and what to expect, well, check out this video right here. Thank you all for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.